industrial Wi-Fi can save both time and money and installation costs. The other aspect is the speed of which you can get it out there and up and running. And then the convenience for all of your, your guys working out there on the factory floor is immeasurable. They've got that solid connection. It just works. They don't even think about it, and they can just get out there and do their jobs. Welcome to Eco Ask Why, a podcast that dives into industrial manufacturing topics and spotlights the heroes that keep America running. I'm your host, Chris Granger, and on this podcast, we do not cover the latest features and benefits on products that come to market. Instead, we focus on advice and insight from the top minds of industry because people and ideas will be how America remains number one in manufacturing in the world. Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we're going to be talking about an idea around industrial Wi-Fi and try to give a good understanding and explanation of what industrial Wi-Fi is. And to do that, we have Scott McNeil, who is a senior network and security engineer for Global Process Automation in Wilmington, to walk us through this. So welcome, Scott. Hey, guys. How are you doing today? Good, man. How are you doing? Not too shabby, man. Not too shabby. Well, this is a one-on-one class, man, so we'll have to break it down for us, okay? So industrial <laughs> Wi-Fi, it's a big topic. So if you're going to explain this to a fifth grader, how would you do that? Well, when you look at it, it's the same Wi-Fi itself, but you've moved it into a, a different and much more hostile environment. And industrial Wi-Fi doesn't include just Wi-Fi access for end, end user devices. It includes other wireless aspects as well, you know, machine to machine wireless communication, sensor to machine wireless communication. So there's there's different types of, of wireless access that are really kind of blanket covered by the the phrase industrial Wi-Fi. Now, everybody thinks of Wi-Fi, man. We think about our houses. Everybody has, you know, routers in their houses. And, you know, I know when I go to my buddy's house, hey, hey what's your password? You know, so what, right. so how is the industrial Wi-Fi different than what we experience at home? Well, you know, first of all, you're not using a, a, an $85 Linksys from Best Buy. Um, you know, you're not uh, cruising down the street getting that net gear to, to, to hook up your garage. You have to use a, a, a fair amount of specialized equipment and wireless access and connectivity is a whole lot more important than it is sitting there streaming Netflix late at night. Okay. So, I mean, it, it really comes down to the hardware requirements then? Well, it's a combination of hardware requirements and client requirements on what they're wanting to accomplish because there's, there's a, a wide variety of things that you can do with Wi-Fi and industrial space. So you need to have that, that reason defined. Whereas, you know, at home, it's, it's, you know, you're streaming, you're surfing the web, and really that, that covers most of it, or gaming, whatever. But in the, the industrial environment, it's a little bit of a different ballgame here because you're not going to be sitting there surfing, you know, Google to see what's going to be playing tonight or whatever on TV. And, and you're not going to be gaming because, you know, you're, you're on your work network. So we go to the same plant, Scott, because I've seen that happen, man. Just saying. Well, uh, I will neither confirm nor deny the existence of various gaming servers uh, in places that I've been. I feel you. Um, but the, the important thing is, is is the connectivity for maintenance guys and technicians on the factory floor uh, in order to access everything they need while working on the system. I got you, man. I got you. Now, you've mentioned a couple of times the environment. And that, that when I think about an industrial environment, you know, there's something that really paints a pretty clear picture in my mind, whether I'm talking pulp and paper or automotive tires, whatever it may be. What are some of those considerations that, that the end users need to consider when they're looking at the Wi-Fi in their plants? Well, all right. You know, you're, you're, you're really hitting it on the head there because every, every place that you just mentioned is there's, there's a ton of heavy machinery. Uh, there's piping and conduit everywhere. So, between uh, the various machine types and, and process types, there's a strong possibility of kicking out non-Wi-Fi based interference, and that can be a huge, huge problem. When you are looking at outdoor facilities like wastewater treatment, or even paper mills for that matter, it, but with how much there that goes on outside with uh, wood yards and different things like that, you have to take into consideration your distances. What are you trying to do? Is it blanket coverage for end users? Is it point to point communications for devices? So the environment, uh, industrial-wise, is a complete 180 when you compare it to standard enterprise Wi-Fi or home Wi-Fi. 
Gotcha, man. Gotcha. Do you have any examples of some craziness that you've seen from an environment standpoint where, you know, end users were over, were able to overcome some hurdles that we typically would not see in our homes? Well, you know, it, it's interesting. Um, uh, one particular facility, I, I, I got called out to do a, uh, a validation survey because they've just been having terrible issues with their Wi-Fi on the manufacturing floor. Come to find out, that they had one of, one of their machines for their process was this infrared curing machine. And after some spectrum analysis that was done, it, it, was, it was shown that essentially this machine was kicking out enough interference that it was destroying the entire 2.4 spectrum from channel 1 to, to channel 11. And so it was just eating up all of the airtime. So all of the communications that they have been trying to implement in, in the facility were all on 2.4. So connectivity was terrible. They were, they were lucky if they got it to work at all, but they noticed when they were shut down, well, hey, look at that. Everything's all working all of a sudden, but we're not getting any data because everything's shut down. So what we did is we started shifting because they, they were broadcasting in dual band. So they were broadcasting 2.4 as well as 5 gig. Uh, we initiated a transition for their end user devices over to 5 gigahertz. And because they're completely different frequencies that don't come anywhere near stepping on each other, they were start. They were able to start moving forward on all the initiatives that they wanted to start using several years ago. So really, you know, that uh, getting to know that that airspace is is a huge piece of the puzzle. Absolutely, man. That was a great example. And what about a, the equipment that is typically used in these settings? Can you walk us through some of that? Well, you know, um, every as you well know, every manufacturing or industrial uh, uh, facility that you go to is, is completely different. Even one paper mill is, is different from another paper mill. So you have to take a look at those specific environments, and that's going to dictate what type of equipment you're going to end up using. Uh, in a lot of uh, manufacturing facilities, they're essentially just gigantic warehouses with a bunch of heavy machinery in them. In some of these places where the heat is managed fairly well, you can use standard AP. Uh, in other places where they're high heat, high dust environments, then you need to start looking at IP66, IP67 rated equipment, which a lot of manufacturers there have outdoor radios, which will meet those requirements. Uh, sometimes, though, you have to go with a full on industrial uh, encased uh, access point, uh, something like what Siemens or, or fluid mesh would produce. And, you know, for the really harsh, harsh environments, just for the the physical equipment to be able to withstand uh, and do its job. So is that like the, uh, the Tim, the tool man, Taylor type equipment for those jobs? Uh, well, yeah, of course, bigger, better, more power. You know, uh, <laughs> let's, let's just see how much we can push out there. That's right. That's right. Probably a, a bad joke, but you know, I try for our listeners. So <laughs> you know what? It's all good. <laughs> so what, what about the uh, rules of engagement, man? Any, any tips you'd give out there for working with industrial Wi-Fi? Well, once wireless becomes ingrained in the, the process or in the manufacturing order of operations, it no longer follows the, the standard IT rules. Now they are uh, officially uh, OT equipment, and they, ha they have to follow the rules of engagement that, ru that OT follows, meaning that you can't just on the fly decide you want to go update the firmware on your APs and reboot them multiple times just because. This is not a college. You know, if you're, you're not inconveniencing a few, few students who are trying to, to study, you're, you're disrupting a process. You're disrupting your technician's ability to get their job done. So as with anything else uh, in the OT environment, you have to wait for outages. You have to plan all of these things for future operations. As with HMI uh, configurations and updates and server updates for your DCS, you just can't do them on the fly. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, look, disrupting the process, you're right. You know, if, if Johnny can't, you know, get on his email at the, at the university, that's a little different than a batch going down, right? Oh, that, that's a huge difference. And, and, and every single place you go to, they have no problem telling you what their downtime cash metrics are. You know, we lose X amount of dollars for every hour we're not running. Well, you know, that they love uh, letting you know in no uncertain terms. That's right. That pressure's up, but when you design it right, you know it's going to work right, man. So, you know, we hear a lot of buzzwords out there. I'm sure you're hearing them. Smart manufacturing, industry 4.0, the IIoT, things like that. How is industrial Wi-Fi changing with the advancement of some of these things? Well, you know, it's interesting because 
with uh, in Industry 4.0, that's in reference to the, the fourth uh, industrial revolution that we're currently going through. And a big portion of that is mobility and wireless integration into the manufacturing uh, systems. Wireless has become so much more important. The, techni- the, the, the technicians not only want it, but they need it on that factory floor to, to help accomplish their jobs in a more efficient manner. Because who wants to, to go out and work on something, then realize you've got to go look something up, go halfway across the plant, spend an hour looking things up, print it out, and then carry it back with you. You've wasted half your day in, in, in just walking around the plant. And then you have other wireless technologies that are, that are becoming ingrained in the manufacturing process, especially when it comes to sensors. And it, it's, it's interesting to watch, especially because there's so many places that are very uh, uh, tepid about, about integrating wireless because they ha- there's, wireless still has this, this stigma of being unreliable in the manufacturing environment. So anything that is important to the core process or integral to the core process, they're, they're trying, they're, they tend to avoid. But sensors, man, they will put up wireless sensors any and everywhere. But the great thing about that is, is there's different protocols that are used for all these sensors. And you can use, use Zigbee or Z-Wave. And, and some of these actually use different uh, frequencies other than 2.4. And they create these full redundant mesh connections, which is really nice. So one goes down, another one picks up the signal, and everything keeps going through, and the operators don't lose their data. So really, manufacturing is, is really starting to move forward with a lot of this. And it's interesting, too, overseas, you're seeing the push a little stronger than you are here, uh, especially, you know, Siemens, as a manufacturer, they do, they do a lot for the, the industrial Wi-Fi community. And in just Wi-Fi in general, they're pretty well involved. And you're starting to see a lot more integration of their wireless stuff uh, over in Europe than you than you are here in the States yet. But again, I, I think that's just a matter of time. I was going to ask you, is that just more like, because Siemens is, when I think of that, I typically think of the IC, the European influence. Is that just because yeah. it hasn't migrated here yet? Uh, well, you know, and and actually uh, like Rockwell um, and their, their huge partnership with Cisco, that's another big thing is, is Rockwell is now trying to bring it. Well, it has been for the past uh, several years, but um, it's starting to become more prevalent since they've been able to start consolidating their offerings. But, you know, they have their whole plant-wide Ethernet. Well, they're also including Cisco Wireless into it, but I'm not sure if it's actual Cisco Wireless or if they're slapping their own name on it and putting it in there. But regardless, you know, so these big companies are starting to see the value in it, and they're starting to get their partnerships together to start moving that uh, into the, the factory floor. No doubt, man. And it's interesting you mentioned, you know, talking sensors. You do see a lot of more manufacturers. Well, that is more, they're more opt to uh, to accept that right now from, yes. from a Wi-Fi standpoint. They're, well, they're, they're not critical to the actual process being done. So if a sensor goes out, it doesn't stop the process. They have time to go replace that before anything can go can go crazy. You really see a lot of the, the wireless sensors for like tank levels and vibration sensors and different things like that, more preventive maintenance uh, roles. That makes sense? Man, we're seeing so much of that, man. It's just everywhere I turn around, I feel like there's a new sensor coming out from a different manufacturer that's got, you know, vibration temperature, <laughs> tank level monitoring, things like that, yeah. all cool stuff. Uh, but it, it's definitely a, a boom going on out, out there right now with with that type of technology coming, which is kind of cool. It is. It, it's, it's fascinating. You know, uh, we've had a couple of episodes where we've talked with people about cybersecurity, and that's come up, you know, time and time again, and, and just security in general. So how does that impact industrial Wi-Fi? W- what are you hearing there? Well, you know, this is yet yeah, another reason that, that so many people are hesitant to integrate wireless into the, the critical aspects of whatever process or, or environment they've got is because they're not sure if well, anybody can break into Wi-Fi and so on and so forth. Well, it's a lot more difficult than you think, especially when most of your manufacturing environments are not in a downtown environment. Uh, most of the sites that I have been to, they're all out on their own. And they, for, the, for lack of a better phrase, pretty much own their airspace. There's nobody else broadcasting around. If someone's walking around with a wireless device, to uh, try and tap into things. They're going to be pretty obvious, you know, by plant security and whatnot, that somebody's not supposed to be there and they're walking around doing something hinky. With all the security protocols that, that are in use today, uh, 
uh, it, it's fairly difficult to to really break Wi-Fi, especially with WPA3. I'm not saying it's impossible. You have to be in the right place at the right time to get the right data. And to be honest with you, it's probably more uh, effort than it's worth for what a, an individual could get out of it, unless they're looking to disrupt a process. But then it, it, it's, it's like anything else. You have to work on your defense and depth strategy for your overall security posture uh, and make things as difficult as possible. Most of these devices these days for industrial manufacturing uh, have all your standard encryption suites built into them. Um, and and you, you mentioned IoT earlier, and that's what all these sensors are. These sensors are IIoT. And it's a, a different than it is for the home with everybody, you know, want, hey, I want my light bulb online. I want my oven online. I want my fridge online. And all these companies are just rushing to get product out there and not thinking about security. Fortunately, with the, the majority of these devices, security is baked into them as far as for industry. Absolutely. I mean, because that, that's it's so important to keep to keep things secure, particularly in a, in a manufacturing process type environment. So thank you for walking us through that one, man. That, that, that was very helpful. You know, we call this Eco Ask Why, Scott, and love to get to the why. You've done a great job of walking through the one-on-one of, of industrial Wi-Fi. But if you were had to answer the why, why should industrial end users understand and embrace industrial Wi-Fi? What would be your answer, man? You know, I thought uh, a lot about that. And, and really, if you sit down and you plan it properly and you implement it properly, why, industrial Wi-Fi can save both time and money and installation costs because you're eliminating a lot of structured data cabling, be it copper, be it fiber. The other aspect is the speed of which you can get it out there and up and running. So instead of having to go through a, a month-long outage uh, and dealing with cabling, you're you're not really having to deal with an outage at all because wireless equipment can be installed while you're up and running. And then you may have a day for a cutover. So your implementation process overall is a lot faster as well. And then the convenience for all of your, your guys working out there on the factory floor is immeasurable. You know, you have a strong Wi-Fi connection uh, for all these guys, and that goes a long way for their morale in general, knowing that no matter where they go, they've got that solid connection. It just works. They don't even think about it, and they can just get out there and do their jobs. I love you, man. You've done a great job of, of really walking us through this, Scott. You know, thank you so much. This is a, a good topic, a relevant topic. It's one that's being embraced more and more by the by the plants that we serve. So I really appreciate everything that you brought today for Industrial Wi-Fi One on One, man. Hey, no problem, man. I, I really enjoyed it, and hopefully, I can come back. No doubt, no doubt, buddy. We look forward to working with you again, man. Thank you for listening to Eco Ask Why. This show is supported ad-free by Electrical Equipment Company. Eco is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit ecosy.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S-W-H-Y.com.